Hi everyone, my name is Nikki Wright and I am in Fayetteville, Pennsylvania and I go to World Harvest Outreach. Um, Trina, I just want to thank you so much for doing this and I am anxious to hear what everyone has shared. So a few days ago, I woke up to the Lord saying, your house is a doorway to heaven. And I was really taken back by that because I was like, well, Jesus is the doorway to heaven. So I dug a little bit deeper and prayed to the Father about this. So I'm just going to go ahead and share what I felt like he was sharing with me. So in Matthew 7, 25, it talks about the houses um, having the foundation of Jesus. And whenever there's storms that come, they won't be able to take us down because we're so having a solid rock foundation in him that we won't be moved. And during this time of quarantine, because of this virus, um, we have been able to be with our families more, right? So I've really seen where families are experiencing healing and not only with each other, but their relationship with Jesus. And so I'm going to share a few things that I uh, have felt like the Lord was showing me that are um, ways that we can have our house be a doorway to heaven. And a house can mean several different things, right? So it can be your actual house and it can be your church family or even your city. And in Psalm 127.1, it says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. So it applies to every aspect of what home is to us. And so if we allow the Lord to do a deep work in our heart, this enables our home to be built in truth and can bring unity automatically when we allow him to do that. And in Matthew 12, 25, it says, And knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and any city or house divided against itself will not stand. So again, he it's talking about unity. Well, um, you know, we can still agree to not have to agree about everything, right? You can agree to disagree if you want to say that. Um, and it's when we intentionally turn our hearts to Jesus and to each other and to look past our differences and to be determined to love that person, even though they see differently than we do or feel differently than we do or... Um, believe differently than we do and one way that we can bring love who is Jesus to our home is to love him with all of our heart and soul and strength and in Deuteronomy 6 5 through 7 you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with all your might these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart you shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. <clears throat> and so what really spoke to me in that was how much we are to you know, speak that into our kids or share that with our kids uh, to walk um, loving the Lord with all of our heart and soul and strength. And... Um, you know, when we demonstrate that to our kids, like towards our spouse, you know, having that unity with them or with our neighbors or people that we come in contact with that may, you know, dress differently, look differently than us or believe differently than we do, yet we still, you know, love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, and strength towards them. It's such a, um, a picture for our kids to see Jesus. And uh, so in 2 Corinthians 5.1 in the Passion Translation, it says, We are convinced that even in these bodies we live in, 
are folded up at death like tents. We will still have a God-built home that no human hands have built, which will last forever in the heavenly realm. The home is not just like a physical building. It can be our hearts too. And he is our God-built home that no human hand has built, which will last forever in the heavenly realm. So, you know, I just feel like as we don't give up and, you know, knowing that the Holy Spirit has been given to us as like an engagement ring, as a guarantee, um, you know, we are able to bring heaven to earth right now and um, con by continually seeking him and seeing from his perspective. And so uh, another way is through worship. In 1 Chronicles 16, 23 through 31, it says, Sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens, splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of the nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. So when we worship, we bring his presence and all, you know, like we tap into his heart. Um, so how can our homes be a doorway to heaven? So to me, heaven is the fullness of God's presence. And of course there are angels, but for me, heaven is the fullness of being able to be with God, right? his abundant love, creatures worshiping him, his presence and healing. And in Matthew 6, 9 and 10, we've heard it many times, but I just absolutely love this. And it says, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so how do we bring earth to heaven in our homes? I feel it is an atmosphere of fully being who we are in him and allowing Jesus to have um, the ability to fully come through us in every opportunity that we're given. And um, so let's take this precious time that he's given us and ask the Father to show us how we can have a doorway to heaven in our homes and whether that be in our physical home, in our hearts, with our families, with our church family, and in our city. Because we can connect, even though we're not together, our hearts can still be with one another and connect in that way. So let me just um, pray real quick. So Father, I just thank you so much for each one listening. I thank you for their hearts. I thank you, Father, that you desire and you hunger for us to hunger after you. I thank you, Father, for the ability to worship you and to learn about you and to seek your face and to really ask you to be in our homes so that we can have a doorway to you, to heaven. And I ask you, Lord, that you would fill each heart that's listening with hope and with love and joy and peace, that you would... Um, bring your blessing upon them and in their home and in their families and in their neighborhood and in the city. And I thank you, God, for this opportunity to reconnect and to build a stronger foundation and to have stronger families and healing. And I thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. I thank you for what you've done for us, Lord. And I ask that you would touch each one with peace and blessing. I speak blessing into their home and into their hearts. Thank you, Lord. I thank you so much and happy Easter to you all.